Hi, welcome to Doris Visits. It's Stuart here. Uh, we're normally away cruising. And for those who love the sea and don't get the opportunity to see under it, except through maybe a glass bottom boat, but you wouldn't get to see these views. This is a blue crayfish. It's in a tropical tank, my tropical tank, at home. Doesn't grow very big, that's probably maximum size. It's just under five inches. Now I bought three as tiny little babies. They arrived in the post, no bigger than your thumbnail. Grown to be lovely, really colored up nicely. Now in a minute you're gonna see a smaller one that didn't, f didn't grow as fast and actually lost the front claws. But that's quite normal apparently, depending on diet, water, or it could have been in a fight. They seem to be getting on well now though. But she's actually grown back her front claws. Here she comes. You can see the tendrils coming round from the back of that rock. That's a pregnant female guppy. The babies you're seeing are platies. There's lots of them. And they've grown in the tank from little speck sizes up to the size they are now. And the crayfish don't touch them. They do not touch the fish. They tend to go for the food I put in, which is the flakes and the crustaceans and the worms. Uh, also, they love vegetables. Here's one of them eating a sweet corn. And they absolutely demolish a sweet corn. It's like a drilling machine on the side. And the little bit that flecks away, normally the fish come and pick up on these and eat as the uh, crayfish are taking all the bits off the sweet corn. They also love other vegetables and you need to treat them to these because otherwise they will destroy your plants. In fact, they'll do that anyway. So you tend to be putting in plants into the tank. I, I tend to put new plants in every six weeks, which gets a bit expensive. And I'm trying to find a way of avoiding that. But they love their vegetables. I mean, look how much they're digging into these. Even if you went snorkeling, you wouldn't see this kind of close-up action because the fish would run away but these are in a tank now you can see the babies in there picking up the scraps as the crayfish eats i think this particular crayfish at the moment is eating a piece of chicken they love sunday lunch when the chicken's put in now look at this this one's come out to grab a piece of cucumber and it's going to take it back here's a tip the cucumber needs to be boiled slightly. If you don't do that, it won't sink. Here's another one. They love tinned carrots because they're soft and they just take them in and gnaw away at them inside the rocks where they hide. They share their position inside the rocks with the fish. I have a number of Pakistani loach. They all share these little nooks and crannies that I've built for the fish and the crayfish to hide in. But they all come out, they come out to collect food, and they come out generally when they know you are around. So this particular plantation that you see here, of all the plants that look quite healthy, this is newly planted. And they absolutely ravaged all of these plants within four weeks. And when they cut them, obviously they go up and float, so they can't get hold of them. But this is them taking the leaves off the plants. Something else we do is when we have mussels or fish at home, as well as chicken, we'll put the mussel shells into the tank. We put some bits of fish into the tank. And often we'll put a bone from the chicken in there, which they will absolutely skin dry. If it's not them, it's the fish. But they do seem to enjoy themselves gnawing and eating. I've never seen them chase a fish. I've seen them try and get to the surface and get out. And I've seen them chase each other. That's another plant biting the dust. The current setup seems to be very well in the tank. The nitrates are good. 
that all the, all the other water chemical levels are good. It's keeping clean. Now you can see here I've put a cup in there to try and keep the plants from being eaten. It's just an experiment and they have lasted a little bit longer but I have noticed that one or two of these have now managed to get themselves to the surface. So I'll have to take these and see if I can replant them. Tank needs to be well aerated to keep lobsters or crayfish because they don't technically live in water. They need to breathe. So they can do it if the air is really aerated well. That's the little one with the new claws that she has managed to, uh, to grow. So we normally are a cruise channel, but I just thought you would love to see um, some things that are underneath the water if you don't get the chance to see them. One of our great fish films uh, was actually shot in St. Vincent in the Caribbean. If you've not seen that, I urge you to go over and have a look. What happens is on certain moon sun settings, the baby fish called Chichi or Trichi come in up the, uh, the river banks into the estuaries. Hundreds of them, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them. And the locals go in fishing for them. We happened to go down to the beach that day, the ship docked, we went to the beach that day and they were fishing for Trichi fish. So that film you can get to by going here and if the link's not come up above my uh, the lobster's head for you to go to see that film, then do look for it in St. Vincent in the Caribbean menu on Doris Visit. They seem to be getting on pretty well, don't they? Although maybe that's a get back, get back. Well, if you've never been on a cruise ship, it is definitely a chance to see the world, to see the Florida Keys, South America, or some of the lovely waters around the Adriatic and out towards Turkey. Um, you can even get to the Indian Ocean, and we're just off to Africa. Uh, although I don't know whether I'll be getting in the water too much there, purely because there's too much to see in the short time we will stop at each stop. But if you've never been on a cruise, do try and have a look at some of our films. We show you the ships, we show you the ports, we show you what great fun it is. He's off home, back to his cabin for the night. Here's Jean. She's gonna show you a couple of ports and a few ships. Have a look and join us on Doris Visits. So there are a number of ways to spell Kefalonia, but let's assume that this one could be right. Welcome to the Queen Mary 2. I'm back on the Aurora. Virgin ships are for adults only. If Helen did exist, she would have existed within these walls at that time. Beautiful saga ship, the spirit of adventure. The Azura was built in 2010, so it's 13 years old now. We haven't been on for a while. Let's go and see if it's changed. It's a tough job, but somebody's got to do it. I mean, who knows when it might fall down. The Morella Discovery 2 accommodates 1,836 guests, has 771 crew. Let's take a look around Long Wharf. We're on the Queen Victoria. We're on a big ship, the Iona. And a big ship means a big cabaret act. And we've got Gary Barlow. Before I show you around the Ventura, I just need to use one of the laundrettes. These drives are busy, but there's one available at the other end. Remember when we thought the Britannia was a big ship? As you leave the ship, there is a guest information center where you can get a map. Then you can stroll around the bay into town. There's two ships in Split today, the MSC Symphonia and the PNO Azura. Please don't forget to subscribe to this channel.